Three, two, one. Hello, I'm Danny Barnes with the CCA, and I'm joined today by the head coach of the Cal State LA women's basketball team, Torino Johnson. Coach, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, Danny, thank you for having me. Well, we just appreciate the opportunity to talk to you and just get a little insight into the Golden Eagles and their 2022-23 season. So let's jump right into this, Coach. Um, you are right now 2-2 two and two on the season have yet to play your first conference game, but you guys have been playing quite a few games and you've had a chance to watch your team play. Could you just tell me what you've learned about your team so far to this point in the season? I think this point in the season, we're still um, developing um, just the rotations. And so um, everyone has an opportunity. We have a roster of 15, uh, two have been injured coming into the season. And then, so then there leaves 13. We're waiting for one to be cleared by the NC2A, who's a transfer. Then that leaves 12. And so they're all competing. They're showing up for practice. Um, they're extremely uh, cerebral. So we have three student athletes who are in our program who are grad students as well with um, eligibility left outside of this season. And so we're really, really excited about just the growth that they've been able to achieve on and off the floor. So for um, this particular season, I think what I've been able to learn is just these guys um, are more resilient than we've given them credit for. Fantastic. I, I've been interviewing multiple coaches, um, been going through and just having the opportunity to talk to the men's and women's coaches around the CCA, but not too many have I had the opportunity to talk to somebody that's played four D1 programs already. Yes, a couple of them might have been exhibition games, but just tell me about the opportunity that your women have had to play the UCLA or sorry, USC's or Pepperdine's um, and also how that helps prepare your team going forward. Well, you know, put it in order. You, you start off with USC. And um, when you're dealing with Los Angeles, having that namesake within your school name is something that you don't take for granted. And so what we're trying to do is compete for the, the, the branding rights, the face of Los Angeles. So we're trying to compete in that regards. And so you have to go into your backyard and play these people. And they're giving us opportunities to do so. And so... You, you you get super excited because you know what it represents. It's a 6'6 six, six young lady. It's a 6'4 young lady. Um, it is a BCS conference. And so you don't have room for error. You don't have any room for error. Um, I think the Kayla Williams for USC was a Big West uh, performer of the year in the previous year, and she transfers over to USC as their starting point guard. And now we're forced to deal with that. And so there's a there's an opportunity in that. And so you want to create the experiences that you feel a collegiate athlete should have. And so I'm not concerned with a win-loss record. I'm concerned with growth. And the way we want to measure it is versus the USC's, um, the Arizona's, who are number four, who's number 14th in the country. You want to play them, um, and you want to be in that environment. The difference between an SC and an Arizona is the fan base. We played in front of 8,000 people. And so immediately you see a uh, culture shift because if we want to play in championship games, we need to be able to win in hostile environments. So you take them into it and you see if they can thrive and survive. You, those, you start off with those first two games and it takes you into Pepperdine. And now you've been working so hard and you've been so resilient and searching for resolve that you beat Pepperdine and you beat them soundly. And that's where our program is. It was, um, they, they were giving us all they could and we were able to come out of there with a double digit win. Um, you, you didn't, you, you, you deserve and earn the pie in the face. So then you, you, you get back in and you're competing versus like the Azusa Pacifics division two, but they're a perennial powerhouse in the division two and the final four finalists. And so they have some other notches under their belt. And that takes you into um, UC Riverside, who's another D one opponent and they hang on to beat you and they need overtime to do so. 
And so then you start to go, okay, this is going to be a promising season. You just have to keep your head down and rely on the work. Just do the work. Don't focus on the reward. Every time that we pick our heads up a little bit and start looking around and filling ourselves a little bit too much, we get that pie in the face. So <laughs> we just got to just fall in love and stay in love with the work. Fantastic. Thank you, Coach. So you talked about some of that effort, some of that work on there, and some of the numbers that have come out, at least from early in the season, you talked about a little bit. You have nine players out there averaging 13 minutes a game. Is that something that you guys, is it an early season thing, or is that some the way you like to play, of having a, kind of a deep, deep bench out there? Um, it's, a, it's more so of how I want to play. And we've taken our time to build the program up. So in years past, we, we weren't able to um, give people those type of minutes or they hadn't been earned. And so now we're in a position in our program where those, those minutes have been earned. And so we're giving them everything they've earned. So we are deep. Um, we are learning the nuances of the game, the strategy within the game, the business within the game. So then we can conduct it properly. So you're seeing um, strategy and technical things and some people who are able to do, um, let's say you're playing defense, but the on-ball pressure is better than someone who is maybe just a little bit better off the ball. So we're able to do some situational things that we haven't been able to do in the past where we are, um, we are anticipating it that we will be able to get multiple stops from multiple people. So offensively, when we are able to rotate you in, there's still things that you're able to do out on the floor that benefit us that I wouldn't be able to say in the past was true. Fantastic. Good stuff. So I'm also looking through just on some just pure stat numbers here. I see you guys are leading the conference with four and a half blocks a game. That's one more block than anybody else. You guys are right are 22nd in the country in rebounding margin, plus 10 a game. So you can look at those stats. You can look through and see some strengths from you guys in a box score or the stat sheet. But tell me some of those intangible, what are some strengths of the Golden Eagles this year that don't show up exactly in the box score or the stats? Uh, we're unselfish. So the, you, I'm not sure how our assist to turnover ratio will be early um, because of the opponent's. Right. And we've been honestly out on that floor running for our lives, to 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 say at least. Um, but there's a there's a different level of aggression associated with the players that we have. They're more cerebral um, and they're truly unselfish. And so I think there's going to be an area there where maybe we don't have someone that has um, 10 to 15 assists individually, but as a group you're going to see those assists spread out. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Good to hear that perspective. So the other one I just want to hear, um, as you've had an opportunity, let's say somebody from the GNAC is scouting your team in mid-February. Just they're doing it that way. What do you want them to say the identity of the Golden Eagles is? Outside of like your cliche, we, um, one, we're a defensive team that gets buckets. That's that's what I want them to see. And then I want them to be able to gauge the rapid individual improvement. So if the, if a kid struggled with shooting early in the season or early in the preseason, they're now um, capable of shooting the ball. Uh, we pride ourselves on teaching. Um, basketball court is our classroom. So everything is about what can our staff, what are the things that our staff can fix? What is it that we can do to develop the talent that we already possess? So I'd like for them to be able to say, when we play a Cal State LA team, that those players consistently get better. They have the ability to mature during a game. And that makes us dangerous as a game goes on. Fantastic. All right, final question for you. You don't have to give me too much of what goes on in the locker room or anything. You don't have to give away any too many secrets. But what do you, what have you laid out, maybe some goals for your team or what you have discussed together with your team that you guys would have liked to accomplish this CCA season? I think that's um, – I think at the, end, at the end of the day, it goes back to the beginning. 
in the beginning when you look at everyone and you recruit them and you for me we're talking about legacy what can we create here what can we do that's bigger than us individually so ultimately you'd like to participate in some of the championship ceremonies that are going on throughout the season so albeit a regular season championship or conference tournament championship. We'd like for those things to go through us. We understand where we're at in our program. And so again, it's staying focused in on the work. If we can do that, we'll find a balance between landing a NC2A tournament berth and doing well in CCAA play, but then also or additionally doing well when we get into CCAA tournament play right and so we start to look at the landscape of things and understanding that there might be a time where we have to beat a ccaa opponent four times this season yeah. right you just really have to look at the the legitimacy in that and so then it it overwhelms you from a standpoint of um goals so we then strive to stay growth oriented as opposed to we want to achieve all of these goals. So, you know, the, the the individual improvement leads to the team improvement. It's no different if I talked about zone defense. Well, if we get better individually, it will only enhance our zone defense. So that's what we're trying to do as we tackle the season. We're trying to make sure that we get better individually and we add that to um, the group thought, the group play, and we become – um, a, a tough out for any opponent. Well, fantastic, Coach. Just thank you for giving us a little insight into the Cal State LA program. Um, I know there's a lot of seasons still to go, but obviously you guys have a very good squad, and we hope to have a conversation again, hopefully heading into the CCA tournament in March. Absolutely. Looking forward to talk. Yeah. Thank you very much, and have a good rest of your day, and good luck this season. You too. Thank you so much, Danny.